Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers addition of water to alkenes. These are hydration reactions. Hydration of alkenes is an acid catalyzed process. Here's the overall balanced equation that shows a representative alkene reacting with water and water adds across the carbon-carbon double bond to give an alcohol. Here the newly added atoms are shown in red. This is an acid catalyzed process though. The reaction requires an acid catalyst to proceed at a reasonable rate. The acid doesn't get incorporated into the final products and it doesn't figure into the balanced equation, but it's important that it's there to get the reaction to go. Strong acids, HA, dissociate in water to give H3O plus, hydronium ion. This is a review of some acid-base chemistry that's relevant for this particular reaction. Water reacts with strong acids and gets protonated. Water grabs a proton off the strong acid to give hydronium ion, H3O plus, and the conjugate base A minus. Any strong acid reacts with water to give H3O plus. Here's an example of a specific strong acid, sulfuric acid, reacting with water. Water is protonated by sulfuric acid to give hydronium ion and hydrogen sulfate counter ion. The point of this slide is to show that aqueous acid can be represented a number of different ways. Sometimes you'll simply see H3O+, sometimes you'll see water and a generalized acid HA, and sometimes you'll see a specific acid listed with water like sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and there are many other possibilities as well. This slide provides an overview of acid-catalyzed alkene hydration. The hydration mechanism is very similar to hydrohalogenation mechanism. We had HX, which was HBrHCl, adding to an alkene. The mechanism here for adding water is very similar. The process starts with an alkene and aqueous acid. Here I'm showing a generalized alkene with no specific substituent specified on the double bond. We'll talk more about that in a subsequent slide. In the first step, protonation occurs to give a carbocation. The alkene electrons, the electrons in the pi bond of the alkene, grab a proton off the H3O plus to provide a protonated species, a new carbocation. Then water attacks the carbocation in step two from both of the two possible faces. If it attacks from the top face, that would be syn addition, and that gives this product, which has water added from the same face as the hydrogen, in a syn addition. Then in hydration reactions, the next step is that this intermediate gets deprotonated by another molecule of water. Water deprotonates the intermediate, and the final product is a neutral alcohol, and the H3O plus has been regenerated. The other possibility is that water could attack from the bottom face, the face opposite from where the proton was delivered. If that happens, the result is the following species, which is then deprotonated by water to give the anti-addition product shown here. In some cases, the syn and anti-addition give the same product, and in other cases, they're stereoisomers. So you just have to think through each individual example to know for sure. Hydration reactions follow Markovnikov's rule. Here's a recap of Markovnikov's rule. In addition reactions that involve a carbocation, the more stable of two possible carbocation intermediates forms selectively. That leads to the more highly substituted of two possible alcohol products for hydration. Here's an example that shows how this works. This is a differentially substituted alkene. The left carbon contains two carbon groups where the right carbon contains only one carbon group and a hydrogen. This molecule reacts with H3O plus and gets protonated in the first step. When the double bond is protonated, there are two options. One option is to put the H on the less substituted carbon and then the carbocation ends up on the more substituted carbon. That carbocation looks like this. The other possibility is that the proton might be added to the more substituted carbon and then the carbocation ends up on the less substituted carbon. That's shown here. The upper carbocation is a tertiary carbocation, whereas the lower is a secondary. And since tertiary is so much more stable than secondary, it forms preferentially. We don't get any of the lower carbocation. Water then reacts with the tertiary carbocation in this case to give the intermediate shown here, which is then deprotonated in a subsequent step to give a neutral alcohol and regenerates the H3O+. Carbocation rearrangements can occur in hydration reactions. Carbocations formed in hydration reactions may rearrange to become more stable. As is true in any reaction that involves a carbocation, you need to look at the carbocation intermediate and decide if it could become more stable by a hydride shift or an alkyl shift. Here's an example of an alkene where that becomes an issue. In the first step, the carbon-carbon double bond is protonated by the strong aqueous acid to give the following intermediate. This is a secondary carbocation. That carbocation could be attacked by water to give an intermediate shown here where we have a new stereogenic center where the water attacked. 
In a subsequent step, that species could be deprotonated to give two secondary alcohol stereoisomer products, and H3O plus is regenerated. The other possibility, though, is to think about the carbocation here that we generated in the first step and ask if it could rearrange to become more stable. The right carbon contains three methyl groups. Each of these methyl groups could potentially move over, and if one of them moved with its bonding pair of electrons, that would be a 1-2 alkyl shift, as shown here by the blue arrow. That would give a new carbocation that's tertiary, and since this carbocation is so much more stable than the secondary carbocation, this is a reaction that's likely to happen. Water could then attack this carbocation to give the following intermediate, which would then be deprotonated by water in a subsequent step to give the following neutral alcohol, where water has been added to this molecule and the carbon skeleton looks significantly different. When you generate a carbocation intermediate in a hydration reaction, check for 1,2 alkyl shifts and 1,2 hydride shifts. A good general rule of thumb when dealing with carbocation reactions is if a rearrangement is possible that leads to a more stable carbocation, that rearrangement will happen and that will lead to the major product or products. And in this case, the major product arises from the rearranged carbocation and the minor product came from the initial carbocation. Alcohols react analogously to water and they lead to alkenes forming ethers. Here's an example of a reaction like that. We're given an alkene here reacting with sulfuric acid and an alcohol methanol. First, let's talk about the acid-base chemistry of sulfuric acid and methanol. Here's the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid. Here's the Lewis structure of methanol. In the presence of this very strong acid, methanol gets protonated by the sulfuric acid to give protonated methanol and hydrogen sulfate. These are the two species that are present when these two reactants are mixed together. So I'm just going to redraw this species below the arrow because that's what's going to be reacting with the alkene. The alkene gets protonated by this species to give an intermediate carbocation, which is shown here. This is a tertiary carbocation. We don't have the possibility for it to rearrange to become more stable. This carbocation is not going to rearrange. In the next step, it reacts with the weak nucleophile that's present in the reaction mixture, which in this case is methanol. This is analogous to water attacking carbocation. In this case, it's just methanol attacking an alcohol instead of water. And the result is two possible stereoisomeric products. One possibility is that the methanol would come in from the face opposite of the methyl group. So this would be the behind the screen face, the back face. That would give the following intermediate shown here. The other possibility is the methanol could come in from the top face with the nucleophile coming in with a wedge bond orientation shown here. Each of these species is deprotonated in subsequent steps. A methanol molecule can deprotonate the intermediate on the left to give a neutral ether product where the two methyl groups are cis to one another and the nucleophile has been delivered from the face opposite of where the methyl group was pointing. Similarly, the intermediate on the right is deprotonated by methanol to give the following stereoisomer product. These two species are diastereomers of each other. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.